Hi, I'm David Alexander. I'm here today with my good buddy, Steve Duda, and we're going to be introducing you to his new synth, Serum. Steve, welcome. Thanks for coming down. Why did you spend the amount of time that you did developing the synth? Right, yeah, I spent about three years on Serum. It started, uh, I think, around 2011 on the Mothership Tour. I was watching Skrillex and uh, Dylan Francis and all these guys making tracks on the bus using soft synths, and I felt like I kind of wish I had one to offer. I took it upon myself to make my own soft synth, and it was uh, a bigger hurdle than I anticipated. It ended up taking me three years to make because I really wanted to make something that hasn't quite completely been done before. I, I think that Serum is special because it allows you to work with wavetables, and we'll just discuss what that is in a future uh, part of this video. It allows you to work with wavetables and allows you to import sounds in a way that no other synth really does until Serum came out. Yeah, not to the depth that it does. There's been, I mean, going back decades, there's been like the Waldorf wave and things like this that allow you to uh, bring in sound to wavetables. But um, I felt like there was sort of a lack for something that was full featured and felt like it had the capabilities that at least I would want in a synthesizer as well as allow you to sort of explore and experiment with wavetables in an integrated way where you're not jumping around various programs and importing raw audio files and all of that, but able to just grab a sound, bring it in, and then process it and manipulate it. So that was part of the impetus behind Serum. Uh, and the other side was really I wanted something visual mm -hmm. um, so that you felt like you weren't lost or you weren't just staring at a wall of knobs. So why don't we just jump right in and give people an overview of the synth? Cool. Yeah, let's do it. So over here, you can see at the top of the screen, we have the sort of title bar with a logo and these selectors, which allow you to navigate the various pages of the Serum interface. So I'll leave it on the main oscillator tab, which you usually see. Mm -hmm. To the right of that, you have this preset menu where you can browse the factory presets or your own will appear. And so I'll save them. And then over here is a menu that has some options that are a little more a little more rare to use, but a big one here is read the manual, which is used to have. Some people have overlooked that. And when you select that, you can see the PDF manual, which is on your hard disk, will pop up. Yeah, I assume they're going to your uh, website, extrarecords.com, to try and download the manual, but it's actually right there in the synth. Right there in the synth, yeah. I, sh I should have uh, should have made that more clear. Now they um, know. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, below, so that's the top area. And below, below the top area here, we have uh, the main, this lighter gray shade area, which is the oscillator page. Mm -hmm. And this is where you have the four oscillators that make up Serum. We have these two main wavetable oscillators, OSC A and OSC B. Mm -hmm. And these are the ones that have sort of the multi-tables. They allow you to uh, have a sound that really evolves over time. Mm -hmm. And then over here on the left, we have a sub-oscillator. Mm -hmm and a noise oscillator, which has some unique properties to it that we'll go over as well. I like the sub-oscillator. It, it really feels analogish in the way those waveforms translate. Um, so I don't know how you did that, but, oh, that's I, but cool. I love it. That's cool that you noticed. Yeah, there's subtle, uh, there's subtle deviations from the pure shapes on those that uh, a friend of mine, Andrew Simper, who uh, runs Cytomic, he had made some suggestions for me on how to sort of get some more analog-looking waveforms as he's the master of, of all things virtual analog. And yeah, it's subtle, but you can hear you can hear a little imperfection in them, which is neat. Uh, and then lastly, we have the filter over on the right, which has this A, B, N, and S routing, which is the four oscillators over here on the left. Oscillator A, B, noise, and sub. So this is how you choose what oscillators are getting routed into the filter. And then we have a whole slew of different filter types here that right. we can select from. Beautiful. And then we have the section below that. That's our modulation section, right? You got it. Yeah, this dark area here are, are, are where all the modulators appear. So over here on the left, we have a... Uh, mod wheel control for drag and drop assignments of the mod wheel. And then below that are these four macro knobs that you can use to assign multiple parameters to a single knob. And then over here on the right, we have our three envelopes, uh, one, two, and three, as well as our four LFOs. And, and so all of these can simply be uh, selected for which one to view and edit by clicking on the tab above. And then to assign it to a destination, you simply just drag it to whatever destination you want mm -hmm. and let go. And as then, long as you get a plus, a green plus sign, you can drop it on onto that dial, right? That's right. And wherever there's a green plus, it can go, uh, which is most controls, not switches, but most most any knob. In fact, you can even do it over on the effects, right. which is the next tab over here. The effects you can enable and disable here along the left and reorder as well uh, to however you want. Brilliant. Uh, and then, yeah, that's the effects section. We'll go over that more in depth later. Yes. The mod matrix window. This allows you to view all of these assignments that we've made by mm -hmm. drag and dropping these, these LFOs. So for instance, if I drag LFO2 to resonance, 
we'll see that connection over here, right. LFO2 to resonance. So these two windows reflect each other. You're allowed to use either one. So you can pick your sources and destinations off these menus. And there's a few that won't appear as actual things, such as noise oscillator as a mod source. Mm -hmm. And then there's also these secondary aux sources, which is the way that you can scale a modulation connection. So for instance, if this LFO2 to resonance assignment, if I wanted that only to happen when I move the mod wheel or control the depth with mod wheel, I could assign mod wheel there. And it'll scale between zero, depth, and whatever value we've set here in the slider. Nice. So that's the matrix window in a nutshell. So the last page here we have is the global page. And this is sort of the extra stuff that wouldn't quite fit in the other pages. It's the more advanced settings to Serum. So for instance, we have uh, these advanced unison settings here on the left. Uh, we have two chaos modulators that we can use for sort of a controlled random type of sound to apply to various parameters. And then we have the uh, advanced oscillator settings here, such as oversampling or fine tuning for the noise or a tuning file for a custom intonation. Hmm. Uh, so kind of advanced stuff. And we also have our preferences here, which save globally. So that's it. That's a main overview to the, the pages in Serum. Um, there's one other window that we should also go over, which is the wavetable editor mm -hmm. that you access by clicking the pencil tool here. Mm -hmm. And you can see that that pops up. And this is where you can go really deep on crafting your own custom wavetable. This is where the magic happens. <laughs> right, you could say. Awesome. Well, there you have it, the overview of Serum. Uh, in the next sections, we're going to go over each of these parts more in depth. So stick with us as we explore. Steve Duda's new synth serum. <laughs> <laughs>